welcome to our breakfast series. This morning, I am making a gluten-free cherry banana bread, which is just a killer banana bread recipe with cherry pie filling blobbed throughout, which is clearly amazing and so delicious. The recipe obviously starts with bananas. And we need a cup or 250 grams of mushed up banana, which is about two medium-sized bananas like that. Now, I'm not gonna be using these. I'm actually gonna be using some uh, frozen bananas. Got these cheap at the store, threw them in the freezer, and they work perfectly. So that's what we'll use today. Throw that in the bowl and give it a good mash. So to the banana, we add half a cup, 120 grams of applesauce. two eggs. Okay. A third of a cup or 70 grams of oil. A quarter cup or 85 grams of honey or agave or maple syrup to sweeten. And that is the wet ingredients. Now the secret to gluten-free, moist gluten-free baking that tastes delightful, that you can't tell the difference between gluten-free or regular baking, is the addition of a fruit puree. And that can be applesauce or it could be bananas, but you need something in there to give it the moisture. I also use a liquid sweetener, so honey or agave or maple syrup, and it just helps to add moisture and makes everything taste really good. Now for the dry ingredients, we will be using two kinds of flour. That is it. This does not require a million different kinds of small measurements of multiple flours. It's simply brown rice flour and tapioca flour. You need 250 grams of brown rice flour, which is a cup and a half rounded cups. So I'll get you to come over here and just see how, it's just about like that, just rounded. So one and a half cups rounded of the brown rice flour and a rounded half cup, 75 grams worth of tapioca flour. Next we need a dash of xanthan gum, a, a teaspoon of baking soda and two teaspoons of baking powder. Before I mix my wet and dry together, I will be getting my cherry pie filling organized. Now, you can use this stuff from the store, works great. I'm actually going to be making my own because it's surprisingly simple and I have cherries in the freezer that I picked from my neighbor's tree in the summertime. Now, the nice thing about making your own cherry sauce is that you can control the amount of sweetener that goes into it, as well as if you have a allergy to food coloring, which is often in the store-bought kind, obviously, your homemade kind will not have food coloring in it. So in the pot, I have a half a pound, 250 grams of frozen cherries, with a splash of water that I brought to a boil. And to my cherries, I will be adding, it's a tablespoon, round a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of water. And we just mix it up, you can check that out. And then I'll pour this into my cherries and give it a good mix until it thickens, keeping it on the heat so it's nice and thick. Now that our cherry sauce is ready, we will put together our dry and wet ingredients. Be sure not to over mix the batter. To assemble the banana bread, you will need a large uh, bread pan. Now, baking in a bread pan this big means that it takes a while for it to bake, about an hour and a half. If you don't have the time, just pour your batter into you know, a square cake pan or a nice casserole dish, and that will do the trick. It won't take as long to cook. I like to line my pans with some parchment paper just for easier cleanup. So I've got my first layer of the batter and then I take my cherry sauce and I will be just 
throwing in blobs of cherries onto this first layer of batter. And then we do the second layer exactly the same. Do a third of your batter and put more cherries on top. I'll just throw a few little blobs of cherries on the top and then this gets baked at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour, at least an hour. It may be more like an hour and 20, even an hour and a half, depending on your oven. But you want to cook it till it's firm to the touch and a toothpick through the center comes away clean. Now I've let this cool for a while. You can see a little bit of cherry in there. I'll give this a slice and we'll taste it. Check out the cherries. Mmm. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. That's good. It's sweet. But not crazy sweet, it's just perfect. It's so lovely and moist, the cherries are lovely. Uh, store at room temperature on your counter, it will stay moist for days. If you wanna keep it past two, three days, uh, slice it, throw it in the freezer and it'll be great. Make sure to reheat it, toast it, and it'll taste perfect. All right, enjoy. Thank you.